previously on any day now. Excuse me. Could I have some butter? I'm not a waitress. It's kind of racist. How was that racist? You just assumed because she was a black woman dressed like that that she was a waitress? And this stuff goes so deep, and it's all, it's, 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 it's all mixed up in the past. I mean, do you ever think about those days? Little as possible. I called Uncle Jimmy today. What brings you out here? I'm writing an article for a magazine. About me? About racism. Jews, spicks, and niggers want to steal our women and populate the world with mixed mongrel babies. This is a mistake. Tell Renee Jackson I said hello. He said he was going to kill you. What else is new? This time next year, there'll be a Negro on the Birmingham police force. That's change. Do you have to do the case, Daddy? Yes. Citizens here don't want colors on the police force. Some of them so mad at Jackson, they want to lynch him. Be ashamed something happened. We couldn't protect him. My God! Call the cops! I don't believe that bastard. Do you believe him? You don't know for certain. I know. Just as sure as I am standing here, I know, and so do you. Crazy bastard. He could have killed us all. He could have burned the whole damn house down. Why? Because of my article? Because I'm still friends with Renee? Go ahead and say it. Say what? Say I told you so. I know you want to. You told me not to go to Uncle Jimmy's. I went anyway. Here we are. Ugh. Son of a bitch. What next? A good old-fashioned lynching? I wouldn't put that past him. In fact, I wish he would try something like that. Might be time to get the old shotgun down. I mean... Can you believe it? Did I tell you he was crazy? Did I tell you Uncle Jimmy was just crazy? Mary Elizabeth, calm down. I have six FBI agents on my front yard. I don't want to calm down. Do you believe this? Are they finally going to talk to him? Yeah, but nobody saw anything. They said it'd be hard to prove. I want you kids to stay inside. Are you okay, Kelly? Did you see what the fireman did to you, Rose's mom? The whole yard's nothing but mud. I'm okay. Why don't you two just head on up to bed? Come on now. We're staying here. What if he sets fire to the house next and time? We would be killed. You can stay at my place tonight. We'll be fine. Your mother and I are going to be here. Here an hour ago, and look what happened. Davis, he was just trying to scare us. It, it, everything's going to be okay. Kalia. I meet just back the van out of the driveway. Damn it, Mary Elizabeth! Can you stay here with the kids? I got it, I got Where it. Where are you going? I'm trying to stop that crazy mother of yours. You son of a bitch, you scared me when I was a kid, but you do not scare me now. What are you talking about? Cross, gasoline, my front yard. Slow down, peanut. What's happened? You burned a cross in my front yard, and don't peanut me. We don't burn crosses, Mary Elizabeth. We light them in glory to God. You disgust me. And your nigger friend disgusts me. Always has. You come near my family again, and I will kill you, old man. You got that? Collier. Come on, shoot. Tell us if he was dead, wouldn't they? Miss Decaf. Once when I was six, he took me to the circus. I loved it. Clowns, elephants, acrobats. And then the monkeys came out. He said they were unshaved niggers. I despise him. I wish he needed my kidney or my blood or something so I could just laugh in his face. Mary Elizabeth. What in the world happened? Is Jimmy all right? I don't know, doctors hadn't come out yet. He was having some chest pains and trouble breathing, so we thought we should bring him on in. Why were you over there? He burned a cross on our front yard. What? Your brother burned a cross in our front yard. That's ridiculous. 
Oh, no, it was quite spectacular. What, what was it, Collier? What would you say it was about eight feet? Turned into a block party. The neighbors came over, brought lawn chairs. Everybody was having so much fun. We hope he burns another one next week. Mary Elizabeth, why in hell would Jimmy want to do something like that? He's your brother. I don't know. Both of you, stop it. Why are you taking his side? That article you wrote could have upset a lot of people. Yeah, did it upset you, Daddy? I said, stop it. Somebody take me home. It's alive. Ask him about the cross. He'll brag about it. You OK, Jimmy? Yeah, the doctor says I can go. What was it? Nothing but a little heart flutter. The kids and I were talking, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, got a little dizzy spell and tumbled right over. Isn't that right, Peanut? It's not exactly how I remember it. Mr. O'Brien? Perfect. He suffered an episode of cardiac arrhythmia. He's going to be fine, although I don't think he should spend the night alone. Don't forget your prescription. You're staying the night with us, and that's that. Come on. You can let him stay with you? What do you want me to do, Mayor Elizabeth? Catherine? I want you to tell me how you're going to sleep tonight knowing that the man who risked the lives of your grandchildren is sleeping in the room next to you. You coming, Catherine? Juggle my morning. I need at least, let me see, an hour to get myself together. Now what? No, no, not you, Lakeisha. I'm, I'll see you in a little bit. Coming! I said I'm coming! Hey, baby. Bill! Oh. <laughs> oh, I missed you! <laughs> so much has happened. Coffee on? <laughs> I wish I'd have been there. Me too. Well, I'll find out who's on the case and see what I can dig up. Would you? Well, of course. I'm here for you, baby. You know that. I'm still finding it hard to believe that Mary Elizabeth has an uncle in the clan. Ooh. Mmm. You smell good. I missed you. I didn't know you were coming back so early. I know. Damn plane didn't land till after nine. Nine? It's only age 15. Mm. Last night, 9 o'clock last night. You got back last night? Why didn't you call? I was wiped, baby, but I'm not wiped now. What's wrong? I, uh, I need to get ready for work. You better go. R Renee, what's going on here, all right? You were humming a minute ago. Humming? I'm not a carburetor, Bill. And a minute ago, I didn't know you'd been home 12 hours and hadn't called. I didn't come over here to fight, Renee. I know. You came over to have sex. Look, I came over here to celebrate. I got the homicide promotion. But you seem more interested in who called who last. You know what? Maybe I should just leave you alone for a while. Go away, Emmy. Come on, we got something that's going to cheer you up. What? Well, you got to come and get it. It's a hamster! <laughs> now look what you've done! <laughs> You're never gonna find him. Will it help if you look too? I don't want to look. I hope it's lost forever. Well, I searched high and low and I can't find him. Now, come on, Renee. Your mother has lunch ready. You two want to stay? Oh, no, thanks, Mr. Jackson. Let's go to Woolworths and get our hamster money back. You have to have the hamster for that, Mary Elizabeth. Well, leave the door open when you leave, Mary Elizabeth. Maybe that hamster will find his way back to Woolworths all by himself. Well, come on, let's go. I know you're sad because you can't move back to Detroit. But I'm not. I'm glad you're staying. Leave the door open. Sorry. Renee, eat your lunch. Only if Daddy promises not to leave the house today. I won't do that, Renee. Sweet potatoes, Dad. Thanks, son. Eat. Your hunger strike isn't going to change anything. Either is Daddy getting killed. That's enough. How come you have to be the one to get in the job? I don't have to. I want to. Birmingham has never had a Negro policeman, and Willie Talbot came to me for help. 
Now, if he has the courage to do this, so do I. Every time Daddy argues the segregation law, he wins. Nothing bad is going to happen. Willie will pick me up. We'll go to court. The judge will rule in my favor. Then we'll go to the police station. Willie will register to take the civil service exam. Then how come you said you had to be there? You're afraid Daddy's going to get hurt, too, aren't you? I want to see your Daddy in court. Nobody's going to hurt me, Renee. And even if they did, it wouldn't matter. Sometimes what's at stake is more important than being safe. If it's so safe, I can come, too, right? Any more questions, smarty pants? One. The hamster's bite. Hey! Ow! You almost took my hand off. Did you get any sleep? Man, I feel like I got hit by a truck. I got about a half hour. The whole time I dreamed you'd join the clan, white sheets and all. <laughs> nice. One egg? Chickens are having a cash flow problem, remember? <sighs> Kaya, you ever think that Maybe we're doing something wrong here. Now, don't go there. No, no, really. Think about it. The FBI has been on our front lawn all night. My parents have opened a home for wayward Hitlers. Our credit cards are maxed out. We have no money coming in. Our whole life is a mess. Too bad Jimmy didn't burn down the house. We'd be able to collect on the insurance. Got a match? No, but I got a better idea. Now, promise me you won't freak out. Oh, Collier, have you ever seen me freak out? Mary Elizabeth, I'm serious. I set before you a hotbed of emotional health. I have given this a lot of thought. And what I think we should do is take out a second mortgage. Are you out of your mind? No. What are you thinking? We could pay off all the credit cards, carry my crew for another two months, and have enough to tie us over until I finish this job. But wouldn't that just be digging deeper and deeper into debt? What we need is cash. That's all. I guess the worst thing that could happen is we lose the house. Hi, honey. How you feeling? I'm still kind of creeped out. Just, it makes me so mad. I want to do something. I hate people who think like that. Let's see. You hate people who hate. There's something not quite right with that picture. Did you get any sleep? Seeing that stuff Davis found on the internet last night. Talk about hate. What stuff? He got on your Uncle Jimmy's website. It was disgusting, Mom. One egg? That is so sad. It's more than some people have. Davis? Davis? Coming. What are you doing? I'm just playing around. On hate sites? Your Uncle Jimmy is nuts, Mom. Davis, I'm tired and I'm hungry and I'm angry and I don't want to take it out on you. That said, I will not have you fooling around on these hate sites. I don't want that filth in my house. How else am I supposed to find out about this stuff? Like any normal human being, just ask. I will talk to you about anything, but I don't want this garbage in my house. And you're sitting too close anyway. Your retinas are going to detach. Now come have breakfast. I think you should see this first. It's from his website. It's a hit list. A what? A hit list. And these names on it. And my mother's name and her phone number and the schedule of her prayer meetings at the church? I told you it was a nutcase. This is it, Renee. I think you should just leave town. Just, just get your mother and go. No way. This is exactly what I need. Huh? To nail your uncle's ass. You ever heard of the Birmingham Pledge, Mom? To what? The Birmingham Pledge. If every person signed it and believed in it, there wouldn't be any more racism. Oh, I wish it was that easy. Well, I signed it. Do you want to? Sure. Hey, Mom. Grandpa's here. Hello, Daddy. We need to talk. Okay. FBI came over yesterday, talked to Jimmy. He said he didn't know anything about it. Well, I'm glad that's taken care of. This morning, Renee served him papers. You know she's suing him? You know he threatened her and Sarah? Where do you get these crazy ideas? Crazy? Davis found these on the internet. The first one is a hit list with Renee and Sarah's names, addresses, and telephone numbers. The rest of them are just, you know, your everyday run-of-the-mill hate sites like uh, Did You Patrol or GodHatesHomos.com or my own personal favorite, the Nigger Joke Center. Trust me, none of those are funny. The organization that puts all this out is called New Patriotism, and your brother's name is on every one of them. 
You've hated him ever since you were a little girl. And you have been making excuses for him your whole life. You stand there and you tell me that it is okay for him to be a racist. I want to hear you say that. I can't change the way my brother thinks. And I don't condone it either. He knows that. But he's my brother. And that'll never change. This is what the man staying at your house believes, Daddy. And this is what your 13-year-old grandson was reading at breakfast. You need to think long and hard about this family and how you fit into it. You understand me, Mary Elizabeth? Of course, Lowenstein wants me to let it go. He's also out of his mind. But he's represented Jimmy O'Brien's organization before Renee, and he's won every time. That's because the First Amendment is Lowenstein's specialty. Don't get me wrong, he's a great attorney. If my father were alive, they'd probably work together. Wouldn't a list of names found on the Internet be protected by the First Amendment? Absolutely. But that isn't what I'm going to be arguing. I file an action against James O'Brien alleging tort of outrage. Oh, I never heard that one. It's about intolerable behavior in a civilized society. And as far as I'm concerned, even Jimmy O'Brien's breathing is intolerable. I can't wait to chew this one up. <laughs> and spit it out. Absolutely. <laughs> Hello? Hi. What? Don't touch it, Mama. This old dead crow with its head cut off. Lord, you think we'd be past this by now. Regardless, pack a bag. You're staying with me tonight. After what that man did just 30 years ago, this doesn't scare me. Mama, pack. I think it's a good idea, Mrs. Jackson. You want me to take care of that for you? I can handle it. Shoot. If it was a chicken, I'd cook it up. What did O'Brien do 30 years ago? Let's just say I breathed a sigh of relief every night my father came home alive. You no, know, Renee, I don't know how you did it. I don't think I could expose my kids to a life like that. It was hard on him and us. I heard about Bull Connor and the march on downtown Birmingham. I think I went fishing that day. It wasn't a part of my life. It was a part of mine every single day. But you, in this case, I, I'm just not comfortable with you doing it. I can't change my life just to make you more comfortable, Bill. Renee, it isn't safe. Sometimes what's at stake is more important than being safe. It's ironic that Willie Talbot is willing to put his life on the line. Because he's also willing to put his life on the line again as a Birmingham policeman. In this city, as a Negro, it is an unprecedented yeah, quest. Not so in many other cities in our country. Since the 1870s, Negroes have been on the police forces in several Nigga don't states. Know his place. South Carolina, Florida, Texas, Mississippi, Washington, D.C., and yes, Alabama, in Montgomery, Mobile, and Selma. In fact, at this very minute, a Negro by the name of Lloyd George Seeley has achieved the rank of captain in the New York City Police Department. Now, as a Negro policeman, Willie Cowell will enforce the law just as any other Birmingham police officer. But the segregation law has been repealed, and this court's no longer required to enforce it. But just last week in Washington, D.C., President Johnson stood before the Congress and said, You are lucky the judge ruled in your daddy's favor, Renee. Yes, Mama. That hamster could have ruined everything for him. I didn't know it was there. People respect your daddy. His work is important. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> Did you see it looking up at him? This is Mrs. James Jackson and Child. Was I speeding, officer? Oh, no. You're going nice and slow, just the way we like it. It's your husband who seems to be moving too fast. Get out of the car, Mrs. Jackson. I said get out. Leave the engine running. Yeah, 
Lordy, Lord, Lord. Look at that. A running car with no driver. You, scoot on over here behind the wheel. Good. Oh, that's good. Looks like your little licorice legs could reach that gas pedal if they had to. Well, now, look at the mess that your husband's got you in now. Who is this man? The one who wants to be a cop? I don't know his name. What's he look like? Tall. He's tall, I think. And what makes him different from any cop that Birmingham has ever seen? He's a Negro. You got the first letter right. Now try it again. I'd really hate for this gun to accidentally go off. Mama. What is he? He's a nigger. Just like you, right? Then say it. I said, say it. Just say it, Mama, please. Yeah. I'm a nigga. You're a smart lady, Mrs. Jackson. Now go home and make your husband smart, too. Here. What's this? A subpoena. If you'll be there tomorrow at 9, I'll walk you through it. Have a good night. Hey! I got something for you, too. You have a good night. What was that? What the hell is this? I need you to go on record testifying that Jimmy threatened my life. Do you have a problem with that? What I have a problem with is you slapping me with a subpoena. Why didn't you just ask me? Because he's your family, Emmy. I, I couldn't take any chances, all right? Your family, too, Renee. I'd love to testify, but could we just talk a little no bit No more for... talk, no more research, no more trying to understand my life or walk a mile in my moccasins or any of that crap. Be in court at 9 o'clock. Can you handle that? Absolutely. I think you know what you can do with that. Decaf, right? It doesn't matter. I'm not going to sleep tonight anyway. I remember the way your daddy got night before court. Nervous, nervous, nervous. The nature of the beast, I guess. Oh, you remember when he fought for that first Birmingham policeman? How could I forget? Mm, if it weren't for him, Bill, you might not even be a policeman in Birmingham today. Oh, it was something. Crowds waking us up in the middle of the night. Death threads, bricks thrown through the living room window. Scary, scary times. Oh, you'll do just fine tomorrow, Renee. Your daddy will be there in spirit. Night, children. Bill, don't you keep up too late. Tonight's a school night. Good night, Mama. Good night, Mrs. Jackson. You're really nervous about tomorrow, aren't you? I just have a lot of work to do. Understandable, you know. I haven't been frightened in court in years. Tomorrow, I'm questioning the man who has haunted me since I was 10 years old. Part of me can't wait. Part of me is terrified. Anything I can do? I'm well, not now. You know, I don't know if it's because you're consumed by this case or if it's because you're just not interested anymore, but I don't know how to be there for you. What are you talking about? Right now, I would like to come to you. I would like to put my arms around you because I love you, but in all honesty, I'm afraid to touch you. Why? Well, because you might push me away, it might be the wrong time, or maybe I didn't phone when I should, or, or have the tone in my voice that you wanted. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. You know, we used to love making love. Hell, we used to love having sex. Huh? 
Wait, 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 no. Your mother is upstairs. I have an idea. Yeah, that was, uh, that was good, you know, it was spontaneous and all, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, it was. I'll, uh, walk you to your car. No, 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 it's all right. I've, I've got some, uh, got some papers I need to go over and, uh, about tomorrow. I don't, oh, I forgot, kids, I have to. Oh, the Eyes on me tomorrow. I'll call you later, okay? I'll call you too. Please tell the court if you've had any recent conversations with your uncle where my name came up. Objection leading the witness. Overruled. And she's not leading, she's getting to the point. You may answer the question. Yes, your name came up. What did he say? He said. I had a chance to kill that little nigger a long time ago. And the one good thing about getting older is you have a chance to correct your mistakes. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Counsel, get across. Mr. Lowenstein, do you wish to cross-examine this witness? You bet I do. Afternoon, Mrs. Sims. Good afternoon. Now, you went back to see your uncle again, didn't you? Yes, I did. And what was the happy occasion this time? He burned a cross on my front yard. And you know for a fact Mr. O'Brien did it. Trust me, he did it. Have the police been able to prove it? No. The FBI investigated the case. Did they prove Mr. O'Brien burned the cross? No, nope, not yet. Not yet. Truth is, the FBI shelved the investigation due to lack of evidence, correct? I didn't know that. Mrs. Sims, would you say your husband has a history of violence? Collier? I've, I've seen him carry spiders out of the house. Answer the question. No. But on the night in question, you saw your husband grab Mr. O'Brien by the shoulders and violently slam him up against the wall, didn't you? The truth is, your husband threatened to kill Mr. O'Brien. Object Your husband your was Honor. more concerned about insects than he is a 75-year-old family member. Your Honor, this without is heart condition, grabbed your uncle by the shoulders, threw him up against the wall, and said if he ever got near your family again, he'd kill him. Your Honor, please, Collier Sims is not on trial here today. Whatever events did or did not transpire on the evening that he and Mrs. Sims went to see Mr. O'Brien, they are irrelevant. Sustained. Thank you, Your Honor. I have nothing further. Can I go now? We'll take 15-minute recess. You okay? Yeah, great. I'm sorry. No, you're not. You hung me out to dry. I didn't think Did that you... Did you see my mother? Did you see my father? Did you even see me out there? I'm sorry if this is an inconvenience to your family compared to your mother's nerves and your father's denial. A decapitated crow on my mother's front porch and my life being threatened probably seem insignificant. Oh, that's rich, Renee. I'm putting you back on the stand. Why don't you just take me out and shoot me? Never again, Sarah. Never. This might be time to say goodbye to Birmingham. I think it's time Jimmy O'Brien said goodbye to his white ass. That's what I think. Don't, Elston. James, we were all frightened. But if we pack our bags and leave Birmingham, Jimmy O'Brien will have won. Is that what you want? He can't win, Daddy. He said it didn't matter if you got hurt, because sometimes what's at stake is more important. Why is it different from me and Mama? She's right, James. Okay. But if we stay, it's to fight the fight. We can't crawl under the white man's rug and disappear into the night. We need to let the town know what happened. That's going to cause a lot of trouble. Is this family ready for that? How can they print such lies? What kind of lies? You don't need to know. And don't sit so close to the television. Your retinas will detach. Mama, can I wear your evening in Paris? Luke just loves evening in Paris. One spritz. Don't you look pretty in pink? Thank you, Uncle Jimmy. Is this true what they say? Hell no. As Jackson alleges the two officers stopped her and her daughter for reasons of racial provocation, racial provocation only. Pretty big words for a nigger. So, Renee uses big words. Colors are always making up big words and using them wrong. It's just one more way they're trying to imitate us. Mama, are you sure this dress doesn't make me look too advantageous? It's precious. 
What are you going to do about these Jackson lies, Jimmy? There isn't one of us downtown that isn't up in arms about this. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if the whole department didn't just up and make a house call to the Jacksons. You know what I mean? It was very clear what he meant. Were you frightened? Yes. And three days later, a cross was burned on your front yard. Yeah. Is it safe to say that you went to see your uncle that night to assure your own personal safety? Your intent was not to attack him, correct? Correct. At that time, did Mr. O'Brien say anything else about me? Mm-hmm. He said that nigger disgusted me and always has. On that note, I'd like to call Jimmy O'Brien to the stand. You are proud of the new patriotism and its websites, aren't you, Mr. O'Brien? I'm just one of many members, and yes, I take pride. Even when Mary Elizabeth Sims... Even when you found out that your brother's 13-year-old grandson was reading them? Boy has to hear the truth somewhere. Besides, that's nothing more than a published list protected by the First Amendment. I'd read any one of those letters in this courtroom and hold my head up high. Really? Which one would you like to read? Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Homosexuals, blacks, Jews, Asians, pick one. This one is our love letter to the Aryan white Christian people. Love letter to white Christians or hate letter to everybody else? This isn't about hate. I got a Jew lawyer there, don't I? Objection? I guess not. This is about love of the white race whose survival is in serious jeopardy of having its gene pool contaminated by mud people. They imply racial superiority? Absolutely. Of the total white Christian Aryan people, only 8% of us is left in this world. Are left. You said 8% is. 8% is plural, not singular, so are would be the correct verb. Uh, Your Honor. He's claiming superiority. He can start with his grammar. The next paragraph is a quote from the self-proclaimed Aryan ambassador, Louis Beam. Read it. We are in a war for our very existence, a war we cannot win except by killing our enemy. The next paragraph is a list of people that you term contaminants. That's right. People with the power to contaminate the gene pool. Could you read the eighth name on that list? Sarah Jackson. My mother is over 65 years old, Mr. O'Brien, far past the age of propagating mud people. And yet you have her name, address, and telephone number on a document suggesting that she is the enemy and should be killed. Objection. Overruled. Where were you on the afternoon of April 17th, 1964? Your Honor, I renew my discovery objection to this line of inquiry. So noted, my ruling stays. Proceed. Where were you on April 17th, 1964? I have no idea. Let me refresh your memory. You were in a courtroom. My father, James Jackson, was arguing on behalf of a mud person who wanted to become a Birmingham police officer. Ring a bell? Now that you mention it. And that afternoon, you pulled my mother over to the side of the road while one of your puppets made her call herself a nigger while he held a gun to my head. Objection, Your Honor. Counsel is testifying. Overruled. I didn't do anything that afternoon, and you know it. Oh, but you enjoyed watching. Like you still enjoy watching my mother suffer. Like you still enjoy watching crosses burn. We don't burn crosses. Oh you do watch always watching mr o'brien never doing have you always sent others out to to do your evil have you always been this spineless i don't always watch you fancy ass high heel nigga you hate me don't you mr o'brien yes i hate you and that's not illegal either that's true but you went from hating to hurting and God bless Alabama, because in this state, hurting is illegal. Putting people on hit lists suggesting that they be murdered has nothing to do with the First Amendment. Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. It has everything to do with outrageous behavior not to be tolerated in a civilized society. 
If this jury finds otherwise, they have become one of you. And if that is the case, who is next? Them? Their children? Objection, their families? You, Mr. Lowenstein? Or maybe... Miss Jackson! Maybe your brother's 13-year-old grandson. Your daddy would have been proud of you in that courtroom today. Did you notice that me wasn't there? Well, can you blame her? Are you all right, Renee? I think I'm losing Bill, Ma. I know, baby. I can see it. But it's called getting to know each other, and it takes time. Now, I know you'll find this hard to believe, but I am glad you didn't rush into this. You mean like take the Concord and get married in Paris? Uh -huh. You'll be all right, Renee, no matter how this works out. Can I stay with you tonight? Sleep in my own bed. Of course you can. I just can't stay in that house anymore. I, it's so lonely, and I, I keep waking up in the middle of the night. I haven't been like that since I was a child. Daddy? Bird again? Uh, not yet. I'd like to talk to you about Jimmy, Mary Elizabeth. Daddy, I don't want to fight about this anymore. Me either. You never knew Jimmy when he was a little boy. If this is a story about him saving a puppy, I don't want to hear it. Mary Elizabeth, will you give me a chance? I was five, he was seven. Mama was in Tuscaloosa taking care of her sister, and Daddy started drinking a lot, gambling, coming home drunk and mad. Take it out on Jimmy most. We had a black maid called her Sugar Mama. That whole summer, Daddy'd come home, wake us all up, make us scrub the floors and wash clothes. And sometimes he'd take Sugar Mama into the library. We could hear her screaming. I don't know if it was the beating that changed Jimmy or from seeing our Daddy treat Sugar Mama the way he did, but. After that summer, he was never the same. And what did Grandma Otis do when she came home? I don't really know. Daddy left three days later, and we never saw him again. And what happened to Sugar Mama? She lived with us till she died. Jimmy's not ever gonna change, Mary Elizabeth. He might, if he thought the people he loved wouldn't tolerate his hate. Mary Elizabeth, this isn't easy for me either. I told you this because I want you to understand. I don't. Could you at least try? No. 